made it to Tombstone, Arizona, an Old West town with a legendary history. Founded in the 1870s, it is probably most famous for the gunfight at the OK Corral that happened here in 1881. And coming here today, it truly feels like you're stepping back in time, or at least mostly. For such a small town, there seem to be a lot of tourist activities, including even a little theme park and a zip line. We are setting out to find the best things to do here in Tombstone among all of the possibilities and to learn more about the interesting history of this amazingly preserved town. I can't think of a better place to start than right here, the gunfight at the OK Corral. Wyatt Earp was a lawman in places like Deadwood and Dodge City before coming to Tombstone in 1879 during the silver boom. His brother Virgil became the city marshal of Tombstone and Virgil, Wyatt, and their brother Morgan along with Doc Holliday all took part of the gunfight at OK Corral. There were outlaws in the area called cowboys who were, I think I was reading that they were the basically the first documented uh, organized crime in the United States. The gunfight took place right here between the four lawmen and the outlaw cowboys. Have you ever seen the movie Tombstone? Because I think it's pretty historically accurate. Like there are obviously embellishments, but I think that they did a pretty good job with that movie. One of the cowboys says to Doc Holliday, like something like, I've got you now, you SOB. To which Doc Holliday responds, you're a daisy if you do, meaning like you're the best if you do. And he actually truly spoke that, that that is uh, allegedly what he said during the real gunfight. So it's pretty accurately portrayed. I'm your Huckleberry being the other uh, famous line, probably a more famous line from the movie that he allegedly really did say, the, the real Doc Holliday. So it's, it's pretty neat and it's pretty neat to see in this museum. They even have some um, props and things like they had the saddle that Kurt Russell used in the movie so that's pretty neat. You can actually tour um, right next to the OK Corral it was a a photography studio and a boarding house and it is where Doc Holliday was staying during that time so you can actually see the room that he was staying in and they have turned the rest of it into a little photography museum so it's it's pretty neat there is a lot more to see at the gunfight at OK Corral site than I even realized so that was that was great to check out they have multiple reenactments of the gunfight daily here at the OK Corral but we won't be doing that today because we have Carly not a fan of the loud noises. I don't think they even allow dogs because of that reason, which is probably a good thing. I know she would not enjoy that. <laughs> now let's go wander Allen Street and see what else we can find. Old time photos. We still have a chance. It's not open yet. Well, we did it. We just did a stagecoach tour of Tombstone. And for $10, it only lasts maybe like 15 or 20 minutes. It did have kind of mixed reviews online. There, I think are a few different ones that run them as well as some trolleys. We learned so much about the town and some of the important people in it. And like he pointed out places like right here behind us is, or behind me is, where Morgan Earp was uh, shot and where he basically died and also pointed out uh, further down the street where Virgil Earp was wounded in his arm and where the previous marshal, Fred White, where he was killed before Virgil became the marshal. So it was really quite interesting. I would recommend it. And the goob got to go with us too, so that works out. The goob. <laughs> the goob. Did the goob enjoy it? She's like, eh, it was, it was all right. <laughs> what do you say? Shall we pop into the Crystal Palace? Let's go saddle up to the bar. <laughs> right here behind me is the Crystal Palace Saloon. The person on our stagecoach tour was telling us that this is the location that Virgil Earp uh, was severely wounded and uh, basically lost the use of his arm after an incident right out here. This place originally opened in 1879 as the Golden Eagle Brewery, making it one of the oldest saloons in Tombstone. I guess a fire uh, basically is the reason it closed, and when it reopened as the Crystal Palace in I think 1882, 
it has uh, been the Crystal Palace ever since, so let's go inside and check it out. I got myself uh, something called Fire Truck. It's a Mexican amber that comes out of Tucson, so I don't know that I've ever had a, a Mexican amber ale. Or a Mexican red ale. I don't know, either way, it's really good. I like it a lot. <laughs> What'd you get? You got yourself a nitro stout? Yeah, they said it was the darkest beer that they had. I have learned that if you have any questions about anything, just ask the people who live in this town because they know so much about the history here. Our, the bartender was just telling us about this uh, building itself and how this is the original building after it, uh, the original building burned down. This is the rebuilt building in 1882, all original. The ceiling's original, the floor is original, the two gaming tables on the wall are original. However, this bar is actually a reproduction that they found the blueprints of in, uh, I think, the 1960s. So it was a replica of the original, but it is not the original. So, interesting, fascinating history. That was a nice place to just stop in, have a beer. We actually got some onion rings there. They were really good. And now we're gonna continue wandering down Allen Street, which looks like there's some commotion happening down here. I'm curious what's going on. We wanted to follow the commotion, but they are using uh, some cap guns. So. Lily did not get her tickets to the gun show and she does not want them. So no. we're gonna head to the Epitaph, the Tombstone Epitaph Museum. The Tombstone Epitaph was founded in 1880, making it the oldest continually running newspaper in the entire state of Arizona. And today they have a museum that you can visit where you can learn about the intense history of, you know, White Earp and Doc Holliday because they were reporting on those events when they were happening. And you can also learn about what the newspaper printing process was like in the 1880s. And since it's away from where the gunfire is happening, that makes it our next destination. I have never been in a newspaper printing museum before. It's pretty neat looking. It's not a huge museum, but it's pretty interesting. You get to see a bunch of print presses and how they typeset things and created the pictures for the paper. It's pretty cool. In the gift shop, we picked up a Doc Holiday soda that's apparently like a Cherry Dr. Pepper. I mean, when you're in Tombstone and they have a Doc Holiday soda, you have to buy it, right? I think so. I think you gotta try it. <laughs> Those are the rules. <laughs> All right, crack it open for us. <laughs> He's not wrong, yeah. It's kind of like a Cherry Dr. Pepper. It's pretty good. Looks like it's locally made by the Southeastern Bottling Company of Arizona. So. Oh yeah, that's nice. It is. It's like Cherry Dr. Pepper, but I think it might even like a little better. It's like a little bit lighter of a flavor, so very enjoyable. <laughs> also, because I purchased a ticket to the gunfight at OK Corral, I get a copy of a newspaper about the OK Corral gunfight from the Tombstone Epitaph. So that's really neat. What a great souvenir. And it was free with my other purchase. It appears the gunfire has subsided for a while. So we'll make our way on down to the Birdcage Theater down there. This sign right here is saying that Doc Holliday's first tombstone gunfight happened here at the Oriental in October 1880. This is also where the Earp brothers uh, were running card games as well. How's it going? Oh no, the ice cream place is closed. That's a sad sign for Carly because they're supposed to have dog ice cream in there. <laughs> How would you like some water instead? The Birdcage Theater is probably one of the most famous places in Tombstone, and it's also probably the place that I am the most excited to check out. We've got over 140 bullets on still in the building today. Right in front of the bar and that bird of bolts about knee items are 45. That slug is still visible in the flashlight today. 32 in the ceiling above the bar between the fan and chandelier. Got a 44 in that back wall above the Latin Twins poster right behind the door. That's just a few of the 140 we got scattered throughout. Before you even pay to enter, they tell you so much information about the history and point out some of the bullet holes just in the front room that you are just immediately like, yeah, take my money. I want to see the rest of it. And so 
here we are looking at the rest of it. And immediately when you walk in, they have a like a Fiji mermaid. And so yeah, take my money. I love it here already. This looks so incredibly preserved. Yeah, it's really cool. It's just amazing to think that so much of the stuff in here is almost 150 years old. Yeah, it is kind of insane. And I think that the fact that they've just left it so much like it was makes you feel like you can just imagine what it was like here. There's a sign right there saying that this grand piano has been sitting right there in that exact spot since 1881. That is just mind boggling. It's just amazing that everything here feels like basically untouched since it would have been in the 1880s and that is incredible. It almost transports you back in time, you know, like it, I feel like I can get a sense of what it would have been like back then. Probably wouldn't want to have been there at the time, but it is incredible to experience now. There are other people here, but I just heard like squeaking happening over here and I don't like that. <laughs> it was probably just someone else who is also on a tour and not residing in this building since they were murdered in the 1880s. This right here is known as the Black Mariah. It is Tombstone's original hearse that transported people to Boot Hill Cemetery. It is only one of eight that were made that year. It came from Rochester, New York, and it's the only one in existence that we know of to this day. So that is pretty incredible that it, they have that here right now. With the exception of six people, everyone buried in Boot Hill Cemetery rode in this hearse. I had high hopes of this place, but there are some really amazing artifacts here. It's pretty cool. I uh, highly recommend, that was a highlight of my day so far. And talking with the uh, person that is working in the guff shop, she told me that her favorite, or her, not her favorite, her least favorite place is the wine cellar, that she gets spooky vibes down there. So uh, I was definitely getting that similar vibe myself. So if you don't want to have a spooky good time, don't go near there. Or if you want to have a spooky good time, check out the wine cellar. It's, it is spooky. <laughs> We dropped the dog off and came back just in time for the rain. It's raining quite a bit. It's starting to let up, but that kind of spoils our, our plans we had a little bit. Uh, on the bright side, a lot of this is covered. Nice covered boardwalk sidewalks. So I think we'll uh, hop into a saloon until it stops raining again. This is originally the Grand Hotel. It opened in 1880, but it burned down shortly after and was known as being a very luxurious hotel. In fact, our stagecoach driver earlier told us that it was the most luxurious hotel at the time between San Francisco and St. Louis. That's like how fancy it was. However, it burned down and uh, now it is Big Nose Kate Saloon, known for having live music, great food, and just a really cool Old West out atmosphere. So I'm excited to go check it out. It is so cool in here. The stained glass in here is really cool. The sign out here says that this is awarded the best cowboy bar in the West. I could believe that. It was it was fun in there. Very loud, charming. very loud, but charming and yeah. just a cool vibe. I liked it. This sign right here says they have the Reuben that won the West. I don't know. Did the Reuben win the West for you? That's what you had. It was a pretty good Reuben. I probably have had a better one, but it wasn't bad at all. And the onion rings, good. That was an enjoyable experience, and the, the rain has let up, so it served its purpose. We have one more important stop that we want to make today, so let's head there now. I can't believe I'm standing in the Boot Hill graveyard right now. This is an incredibly interesting place, especially because so many of the people that were buried here were murdered. They were early pioneers of Tombstone, and a lot of them were outlaws and thieves and things of that nature, so it's very interesting history within this cemetery. You know, row one, they have them all uh, set off in rows. One of, some of the first graves that you see when you come down to this corner are Billy Clanton, Frank McLaurie, and Tom McLaurie. These are three of the outlaw cowboys, the three who were killed during the gunfight at OK Corral. 
they are the only ones who died as a result of that gunfight, and all three of them were buried here. And tying everything in of what we've done today, they were carried in the hearse that we saw in the Birdcage Theater. There is just so much fascinating history here and it's just so rich and there is so much that you can see and do and to actually come here to the cemetery to see the actual graves of some of the uh, people that we've learned about today is just a really incredible thing. Right here there's a grave that's marked as unknown 1882 another unknown the cemetery is full of markings like this unknown a lot of them say murdered suicide just the the fate of the people in the cemetery is just um a lot of unfortunate circumstances they give you a pamphlet uh, at the entrance it is three dollars to get in the pamphlet talks about how this was tombstone's very first cemetery in 1878 is when they first laid out the plot for this cemetery, originally called the Tombstone Cemetery. It was the first cemetery in Tombstone. I'm not sure exactly when they started calling it Boot Hill Cemetery when they changed the name, but the story is that there were so many violent and sudden deaths that people were actually just buried with their boots still on. That's how abruptly that they would have been buried here, hence the name Boot Hill Cemetery or Boot Hill Graveyard. person whose uh, grave this is right here. The pamphlet says that he was stoned by Apaches. Just goes to show just how, I mean, how rugged and brutal the Old West would have been. Lynched by the Bisbee mob. I don't know who the Bisbee mob are, but they don't sound like a fun bunch. No, they don't sound very nice. This is one of probably the most famous headstones here. It says, here lies Lester Moore. Four slugs from a 44, no less, no more. If you look up like the cemetery or anything, like that's that's one of the headstones that's a, a pretty famous one. Because it rhymes. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I guess the story with Lester Moore is that he was a Wells Fargo agent that got in a dispute with someone over a package and that they both died. I'm not sure how accurate that is. I think that's maybe just a rumor, but um, I'm gonna assume that their pamphlet probably knows more than than the average person on the internet. <laughs> probably one of the other more prominent people buried here is Marshal Fred White. He was the marshal before Virgil Earp. He was killed by Curly Bill, one of the cowboys. At least in the movie, it seemed like maybe it wasn't an accident, but he goes to hand him his guns and uh, it goes off and, and kills him. That actually took place on the site of the Birdcage Theater because the Birdcage Theater was uh, didn't exist at the time that that happened in 1880. I guess the person who has the newer, nicer headstone buried in here in the 40s uh, was someone who was working on restoring the cemetery here and it was his wish to be buried here, so that's pretty neat. That uh, tombstone heat's kicking in now that the, the rain has stopped. Are yeah. we ready to head, head out? I think I'm good. Well, this has been a really fun and just fascinating day. It's been pretty interesting. I have had a great time. This was also one of my bucket list places was, to visit. Yeah. And so I'm just curious what you thought of it. It's cool. I'm not as into Western things and horses as you, but I liked it. I loved it, especially <laughs> the Birdcage Theater, but the whole place is fantastic. I am so excited because next up, we are visiting Bisbee, which is not too far from here. Jeremy's dad actually lives in Bisbee, and uh, I'm excited to check that out and kind of experience it with a local who knows their way around town and what they're doing. So we will see you soon from Bisbee.